Just how far do the powers of the executive branch extend? Tomorrow, the Supreme Court will consider the constitutionality of one of President Obama's attempts to expand those powers, recess appointments to the National Labor Relations Board. Earlier, I talked with Senator Ted Cruz about the case and his take on executive power. I started by asking about his concerns over how far President Obama has gone and whether it's setting a precedent for other presidents, regardless of their party affiliation. Well, Shannon, the pattern we've seen under President Obama of, of disregarding the law is, is really one of the most troubling aspects of this presidency. That, that, that over and over again, when he disagrees with the law, rather than try to change it, rather than go to Congress and try to change the law, he simply refuses to comply with it. And, and, and that's something that ought to trouble everybody. It ought to trouble Republicans. It ought to trouble Democrats. Uh, we've seen it on Obamacare where all sorts of aspects of Obamacare that are disasters, that are not working, that are causing millions of people's insur insurance to be canceled, he simply refuses to, to apply the law, says we're not going to follow this part of the law. And with respect to appointments, tomorrow the Supreme Court's going to hear arguments and a challenge to three appointments he made to the National Labor Relations Board that, that were flatly unconstitutional. The, the Constitution gives him the authority to appoint vacancies without Senate confirmation when the Senate's in recess. And, and every president, going, going back to George Washington, has understood that the Senate decides when it's in recess. And the president doesn't get to do that unless the Senate is actually in recess. What the president did here is even though the Senate was meeting, it wasn't in recess, he just asserted the power to declare the Senate in recess and made three appointments that are illegal. Three federal courts of appeals have said these appointments are unconstitutional. And the president of the Obama administration, they don't hesitate at all. They just keep disregarding the law, and it's very troubling. Well, now the justices finally will have a, a say at this, and, and we'll see how they ultimately decide this. In the meantime, also in the last couple of months, the Senate has changed procedure with regard to the nuclear option, also giving the executive branch, via the Senate, more power, uh, appointing several judges to key positions and key courts, um, which, by the way, while there are judicial emergencies in num a number of circuits, there aren't in the ones that the president's really been focused on. Um, do you see that as worrisome as well? Because, you know, critics will say presidents have these rights. They have the right to set up their own appointees, their own nominees, to staff courts. It's part of what they're called to do. And Republicans wouldn't be objecting if a Republican was in the White House. Except every one of those points is, is, is objectively false. Uh, for, for, for one thing, these two issues, the nuclear option and the president's lawlessness, are, are very interrelated. The reason that Harry Reid broke his word, repeatedly he'd said he wouldn't, wouldn't exercise the nuclear option, and then he just broke his word, just like President Obama did when he said, if you like your plan, you can keep it. The reason he did that is because the Democrats are very concerned about courts holding this administration accountable for their lawlessness, and in particular the D.C. Circuit. The D.C. Circuit is where a great many of these lawless actions are challenged. And this was all about wanting to pack the D.C. Circuit with judges that President Obama and the Democrats think will rubber stamp the president's lawlessness. You know, one of the things that's striking, and there have been Republican presidents, unfortunately, who've overreached, who've exceeded their executive authority. And when they've done that, there have been Republicans who stand up and call the Republican president to account, say the Constitution matters and no president, no man is above the law. One of the things that I've, I've found most disappointing where are the Democrats? Where are the liberals? Where are the journalists and the media calling President Obama to account for disregarding the law? Right now, as we look at these fights, as we look at the president picking and choosing, saying, I'm not going to follow this law, I'm not going to follow that law, I'm not going to follow this other law, there are virtually no Democrats who will even speak up a word of criticism. You, you see with the case of the Supreme Court tomorrow, where the president has ignored the recess clause of the Constitution ignored the fact that the Senate wasn't in recess. You know, in prior years, there would be Democrats speaking up to protect the Senate. It is amazing to me that every single Democratic senator just, just goes in line and, and docilely agrees with the executive usurping the power of the Senate. And, and the reason that matters, listen, that at the end of the day, the framers of our Constitution, one of the great geniuses they had, is they understood that by, by dividing power in government, if you can have the branches resisting each other, 
it protects the liberty of the people. Because the most dangerous thing for the liberty of the people is for power to be concentrated in one place where it can be directed against the people. Congress is failing in its job. The Senate is failing in its job when it doesn't resist against the president usurping power. And all of us should be concerned. Listen, if this were a Republican president, I promise you I would be every bit as vocal against a Republican president usurping power and violating the Constitution. And, and, and we really need to see some Democrats, some liberals standing up against an imperial presidency. We'll watch that case and we'll continue to watch the fight on the Hill as well. Senator, thank you. Always a pleasure.